Hi, my name is Melissa van Dijk and in today's video we are going to look at your niacinamide and retinol products. Now I often get asked, can I use my niacinamide and retinol in the same routine? Like can I use them together? And the short answer is yes. They have no conflicts with each other and they actually work really well together when also combining them. And I'm also here to help you to also go over the benefits as well as also what you have to be aware of and then also want to include a little demonstration. Now, first of all, it also can help you if you have, for example, oily skin, since it also can minimize your pores and therefore also reduces the oiliness on your skin. Then on the other hand, it also can help you with hyperpigmentation as well as also redness. If you're looking at hyperpigmentation, dark spots, brown spots, it can also help you to first of all fade them away quicker and then also with your redness to also calm down the redness to achieve overall a little bit more an even out skin tone. But then also on the other hand, it has also anti-aging benefits in the long run. It can help you to reduce fine lines and wrinkles. So when combining them, you can see this is an amazing combination. However, you also have to go over a few points before also immediately jumping into this combination and use it daily on your face. Because you have to keep in mind that depending also on what product you're going to use, you have a certain percentage of your active ingredient in it, which can also be likely to cause skin irritation. Such as um, on one hand, your niacinamide serum. If it already includes 10% niacinamide, the likelihood of getting an irritation is already there because it's quite high or even if you have a 20% niacinamide at home. So the higher you are getting with your percentage of your active ingredient, the more likely you are also experiencing skin irritation because your skin is new to it, it hasn't adjusted to it yet. And you have the same thing with retinol. You can also have different percentages of retinol, such as 0.2% or also maybe 0.5% or also 1%. And there are so many like different options and in-betweens where you can also find certain like percentages of it. And if you're being new to it and you're already starting off right away with let's say the 20% niacinamide as well as the 1% retinol, you're more likely to experience skin irritation because the percentage of those two active ingredients are quite high than if you would start off with something lower. And therefore figuring out um, for what percentage your skin has already adjusted to it, I recommend to at first use the products individually, like use your niacinamide for example in the morning and your retinol in the evening, so that you also can see how your skin is going to respond to it and based on that see what will work and also what may work in the future for you. I want to give you an example. If you're new to niacinamide, usually if you also have it in certain like products already mixed in, they have a percentage between like 2% or 5% of niacinamide. But if you have like a serum that also contains like and also focuses on niacinamide itself, it can already start with 10% or even higher. So I recommend that if you have it already at home, 10% is in that specific case already a good start. Use it alone on its own um, or maybe combining it with a moisturizer in the morning to, to see how your skin is going to respond to it. If you can already see irritation when using niacinamide on its own, you may want to dilute it with your moisturizer for example before also adding it into your routine when using your retinol so that your skin has time to adjust and you also are less likely to experience skin irritation when later on combining the two together. Same thing with your retinol. I always recommend that if you're being new to your retinol, start off with the lowest percentage. So for example, with the 0.2% retinol that I have right here. If you have it in a cream or in a lotion, look for the lowest percentage because then it's also less likely to cause skin irritation, especially also if you're new to it. Because retinol itself can also cause like some side effects such as dryness, redness, flaking, as well as also a sensitivity in general. So if you're starting off with the highest percentage and you're already using it immediately daily in the evening, then you're for sure going to experience it, especially because those side effects can also occur even like a few days later. You won't see them immediately. Please keep this in mind. So when starting off with the lowest percent, 
like percentage and use it like two three times um, per week in your evening skincare routine on its own or maybe also combining it with a moisturizer then you also will be able to see what your skin can tolerate and once you have figured out how your skin is going to respond to your niacinamide product and then on the other hand also on your retinol product you're also ready to also combine them and use them in the same routine and I do want to emphasize one thing quickly Usually you will need to have more time to adjust to a retinol product than to a niacinamide product. So if you're currently starting off with any like percentage of retinol, depending also on if you're new to it or if you have already previous experience of it, but you want to like go a step higher, then your skin always needs to adjust to it. Meaning even though you cannot use your retinol, daily, immediately in your evening skincare routine, does not mean that you can't use your niacinamide in the days between, as well as also when using your retinol. So let's say you're new to uh, your retinol product, you have no issues with niacinamide, but you also have a few issues with retinol. So what you can do is use your retinol, for example, two, three times per week, but keep on going with your niacinamide daily in the evening. That's totally fine. And then the days when you're not using your retinol, you're just sticking to your niacinamide. And when using your retinol, you're combining it with your niacinamide. That's fine too. You don't have to use both products immediately daily. You can also alternate between them. Also use your retinol less often, but still keep on going with your niacinamide. And so once you also have figured out what percentage works well for you, how what your skin can tolerate and how your skin is going to respond to it, I now also want to share with you a little demonstration so that you also can see the amount of product I'm going to use as well as also how you can apply it. Now first of all, when also using them together, I recommend using them in your evening skincare routine. And when also getting started with your evening skincare routine, first of all, always start off with step number one. Step number one is also washing your face with a gentle and suitable cleanser for your skin type as well as for your skin needs. I also recommend in general using a gentle cleanser to also avoid the likelihood of getting irritation. And so therefore, once you also have washed your face to also remove any excess oil, dirt, makeup, as well as take off your sunscreen, you have a freshly washed and clean face, you're also ready to move on. Now I do wanna emphasize, I like to also pat my skin dry once I have also washed my face. You can also apply it on damp skin if you like to, but I do not recommend using it on completely wet skin. That's something that I can also like recommend to you when also trying it out for the first time. Then if you like to, and also if you usually want to include it in your skincare routine, your second step is also a hydrating and soothing toner, which you can use in between, but you don't have to. It depends also on what other products you have at home. And then you can also go ahead and move on to your niacinamide and retinol product. Now, if you're using a niacinamide serum, I recommend using your niacinamide serum first. So that's the one that you're going to apply maybe after you've cleansed your face or after your toner. When also using your niacinamide serum, and it is also in a serum-like texture, I recommend using between two to three drops. Depending if you're also including your neck as well as your decolletage, you may want to use one or two drops more. But generally speaking, if you're being new to it, try it at first with two to three drops and based on that adjust it. Please do not use an entire pipette or half a pipette full of niacinamide. Be again, if you're also using enough for the entire face, neck and maybe decolletage area so that it also is able to sink into the skin, you also again are less likely to also get irritation from it. Because if you're using too much on your face, it still can also cause a certain irritations. So please figure out also the right amount so that it also feels good on the skin. Now I'm going to use Paula's Choice 10% Niacinamide Booster and I'm also going to stick with three drops. Now I like to use it in the palm of my hand and then also gently apply it all over my face as well as neck. You can also go ahead and use it also for example immediately on your face, like dispense the product immediately on your face, that's fine too. And then also gently apply it all over. 
make sure that you haven't used too much but still uh, like enough so that you also can cover the entire area but the product should be able to also uh, fully absorb into the skin if you can feel a residue if you can feel like it's sitting on top please make sure to also reduce next time the uh, amount of product that you're going to use because it should uh, like it shouldn't sit on your skin it should be able to also fully sink into the skin then once you also have applied your niacinamide serum, you can give it 30 seconds to a minute, depending also on the product that you're using, so that it also has time to also sink into the skin. And then you can also get started with your retinol product. Now your retinol product can be a serum. It also can have a little bit more of like an lotion-like texture that also comes in a pump, or it also can come in a cream. Um, if you're using a cream of retinol, please make sure to use about a pea size amount. But if you're using a serum that also includes retinol, again, I recommend using about two to three drops, depending also on the texture. And this is also a guide that I can give you, and based on that, you can adjust it. I'm using the 0.2% retinol in Squalan by uh, The Ordinary. And since that one has also a little bit more of an oilier feeling to it, I also like to stick with two drops because when using too much of it, it can feel oily and greasy quite quickly and then it's also not able to also fully sink into the skin. So therefore, depending also on the product that you're using, if you also would use, for example, uh, like a lotion-like um, product such as from Paula's Choice, it usually also recommends on the back of the packaging, such as using maybe one or two pumps, depending also on the strength and lotion that you're using and for the cream, a pea size amount. So for the retinol in Squalane, I'm going to stick with two drops. Then again, I use it between my hands and I'm going to gently apply it all over my face and neck. Now please make sure when using your retinol product, and also I recommend reading on the back of the packaging what it also recommends based on the directions, but do not bring it too close to the eyes. I do not recommend getting too close to the eye itself as well as please do not use it on the top of your eyelids or too close around your mouth because if you're new to it and you're um, getting a little bit more of a sensitivity then using it on sensitive areas already can also make the irritation worse. So therefore when using it for the first time and you're trying to also see how your skin is going to respond to it, avoid this area right here because it's quite sensitive as well as the actual lip because I had already the experience that when also using it too close to the eye and also the lip it felt like a burning and stinging meaning because those areas are already a bit more sensitive and also like a little bit easier to irritate please avoid them and if you are looking for um, an anti-aging like wrinkle like anti-aging uh, eye cream I recommend using also retinol eye creams instead of your actual serum or cream for your face because the percentage and the formulation may also be a bit more suitable than the product that you're using all over your face. I do want to share this tip as well because it can actually irritate those areas quite a lot and then it burns, stings and the pain is quite real. So once you're done with the application of your retinol product, um, depending also on your skin, depending also on the experience that you're having with your retinol, you can also use a moisturizer afterwards. Because if you have a normal to dry skin type and you're trying this combination, it can also make the skin a bit drier. For oily skin types, this may not be needed because you're happy to also have less oil on your face. But when also having a normal to dry skin type, you may want to add a moisturizer afterwards. And I do also want to mention a little tip in between that also when being new to it and you're trying to figure out um, how you can also reduce the irritation of your retinol, you could also go ahead and use your niacinamide at first, then your moisturizer, and then you can also layer your retinol on top so that you're kind of diluting it and it also is going to slowly penetrate into the skin to also um, reduce the likelihood of getting an irritation. That's fine too. But I'm going to use a moisturizer on top and I'm also recommending using about a pea size amount. And then applying it gently on top. Again, either use it before you're applying your retinol or afterwards.
So, and once you're done with the application of your moisturizer, then that's basically already how you can also use your niacinamide and retinol in the same routine and also combine them and also how you can get started with your skincare routine and how you can also end it. Now this is also the little demonstration that I wanted to include to also show you how you can also use the products. Now I do hope that now with this little video and also the demonstrations and the tips that I shared with you, you also know ready to also get started with your combination of your niacinamide and retinol product. And if you find it helpful and if you also like this video, please also don't forget to give the thumbs up as well as share it. And thank you so much for watching and I will see you soon in the next one. Happy skin caring. Bye.